Hey, Spuddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization 6 as Congo. We're playing as Nazinga Mbande, and I just crashed my game by clicking on our portrait. No, we didn't crash the game. Okay, we're good. Uh, we're doing really, really well. But now, we don't really have any great works. We haven't really activated her almonds. You know, her ability isn't really online. Let's go ahead and launch the Inquisition. Boom. There we go. We just need one more era score, and we've got ourselves a Golden Age. And I think the main objective for this era is to get that Golden Age, finish off this era, round out, get the last few cities settled, maybe even potentially settle down here for some like potential optimization reasons. Um, but yeah, just like fill in the land. There's like a few little city locations that I think are worth getting. I might just leave this here forever and like let people be mad about it. Uh, I think it would be good to trade with Chinguetti to get that extra gold. Uh, let's go ahead and trade with Chinguetti. Let's do it. Now I need to rebuild my capital because I basically stripped it dry. It's a similar sort of thing with Mbuila. I need to like rebuild these cities because I did a lot of, lot of chopping last episode. And don't get me wrong, I got a lot of value out of that chopping, right? But there are other things that I need to do as well. You know, I need to make sure that I'm maintaining my empire in a reasonable manner. So we have printing, which is now doubling the output of our great works of writing. Let's go ahead and head towards siege tactics so that we can get access to Renaissance walls. Renaissance walls were a good source of tourism in the mid to late game. And it's a good way to convert production into tourism. We definitely want to be encouraging people to give us delegations. So I'm trying to make friendship with everyone on the map and like be their friends. We did just get medieval fairs, which is giving us access to very nice extra governor title. We could potentially go for anchor. What? I don't think I particularly care about that. Merchant Confederation is a really fun and useful card. Now, I have three envoys. I could go to max rank with Chinguetti and Yerevan, which would give me plus three faith in my worship and chance rebuildings. And then this would actually make it super worth it for me to build stupas because now they're plus nine faith if I can get a refresh on my yields. I'm definitely going to go for diplomatic service so that I can get my hands on chanceries. And yeah, I think we take Liang here and I'm going to pop her into Mbuji Mai. It's pretty bougie of you. Mabuji. Place some plantations, keep the city going. Do you reckon you can convert Mexico? Oh, that was a bit evil. I'm sorry, I thought my people were welcome. I, I apologize. Ah, uh, yes, goodbye. I'm getting graphical hangs every time a AI leader wants to talk to me. So, uh, Murasaki Shibik uh, Shikibu is finished, which is another great writer for us to grab. And our goal is to try to get as many of these great writers as possible because they are worth a lot of score, both in terms of like culture per turn as well as tourism. It's like some really good passive amount of tourism to be making. And I probably from the next era when I'm making a more reasonable amount of tourism, I'll want to start. Well, actually, I'm making four tourism per great work of writing. Can I buy any more great works of writing? I can. I'd like to buy it just for straight cash if I can. OK, so we're building a collection here. Four great works of writing providing me eight tourism each. That's a good start. That's a good start, which does make me want to think about buying open borders. There's still one player I haven't met, which is kind of, it's kind of annoying me. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm being real with you, it's kind of a, annoying me. Liang is not established yet, so there's no point in buying a builder over there. We will go ahead and buy a builder here. Um, can I get the quick convert off? Nope, didn't get it. Unfortunate. So I'm starting to get embassies with everyone. Everyone on the map likes me. We've got a huge empire. We've got a ton of chops to do too. Entertainment complex completed. Can I buy the arena? What if I were to sell off this stuff? If I could buy the arena, that would shave a good few turns. Yep, we can buy the arena. And that will shave a good few turns off of building the Colosseum. Plus another two, two amenities is nice. Uh, how long for the Colosseum? 14 turn Colosseum that we can build with Gothic architecture plugged in for a 15% boost and Magnus attached in this city. So potentially very, very fast Colosseum coming up here. This city basically exists just to occupy this land so that no one else comes in and settles it. Also plus three error score from a sprawling empire. Very nice. Uh, we're well going to overshoot our need for error score, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. Medieval era ends in 10 turns. Could not come any sooner. We chop this. That brings that down to nine turns. You improve that. God, I would love. I really, 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 really want the Colosseum here. It's such a good wonder. Um, the trade policy, it would be nice if I was the target of this trade policy. And it would also be nice if we could make military units for half price. Because I do have the retainers card plugged in. Which means that... Um, I won both. That's awesome. Uh, I do have the retainers card plugged in, which means I am getting plus one amenity for every unit that I have stationed in a city. So it would be good to actually get these units out down to seven turns on the Colosseum. I think a quick chop on this might do it. Theater Square Festivals. I think I should stop doing my Theater Square Festivals now. So Kinshasa needs a garrison unit. What is the cheapest unit I can get? A Spearman. Perfect. And then we'll go for the Stupa. We can also start to build our Imbanzas. I'm going to place my Imbanzas, but this is the order I will go... Like this, yeah. Let's get your Mbanza down. We want to get an Mbanza in every single city, ideally, in my opinion. All right, diplomatic service is completed, so we have access to Machiavellianism, Visselbanken. So this Visselbanken is where we can start to look to out, outsider trade. Um, probably not right now, because we don't actually have our trade routes up. But 
that's where it becomes a viable option for us to look to like get alliances and trade with the outdoor out, outside world. Talking about alliances, the two most effective alliances for me would probably be a scientific alliance with John Curtin. I'll send you a resident embassy. Uh, I will get a research alliance with you. There you go. And then if I can talk to Abraham Lincoln, he won't declare friendship, but I can probably send up a resident embassy. No, he won't do it. Plus, I just allied someone he hates. Let me quickly buy his luxuries. Let me buy up all the luxuries on the map so that we can maximize. Yeah, now we're into happiness. Look at that. Huge yield boost. Ethiopia, on the other hand, I should be able to get a religious alliance with him or a cultural one. I think a religious alliance is better. I would like to get humanism, so I have access to the art museum and the archaeological museum, which means I need to start building up my relationship with people like Kumasi and Vilnius. Um, and in order to do that, I think I will go ahead and plug in Diplomatic League so that my first envoy is doubled, and I'll put an envoy into Vilnius. And I guess just for good measure, I'll put an envoy into Bologna, even though I don't particularly care about having Susantry of Bologna. It's probably just a good idea. Uh, I don't have very good locations for holy sites around here. Let's do a little bit of a scan. There is a plus two right there. I'll take a plus two, even if it is only on a temporary basis. We've got a ton of faith stacked up, so let's have a think about how we want to make use of that faith. I guess I will buy a stupa in the capital because it needs it. I'll buy a trader in the capital. I'll buy a settler in Ambuila. I'll start buying builders from Bujimai. Uh, you chop here. Three turns of the Colosseum. If I lose this Colosseum, I will cry. Okay, Abraham Lincoln denounced me, which is kind of scary. The one good thing about that means that other people who hate Abraham Lincoln might like me a little bit more. There's siege tactics. So we have access to Renaissance walls. Your spearman is finished. Um, so I don't really have any more cities to settle unless I could like squeak in in here but this is like completely undefendable I'll go ahead and see if there's any noise down here that I could maybe squeeze in a good tundra city and then that's going to be it otherwise my faith is going to be almost exclusively used for civilian units um on the order of like builders and um traders so let's trade with Melbourne because that's worth a bit of science right so I've basically completed my objectives on the bottom half of the tech tree now when it comes to a culture victory the only things that I really care about are getting my hands on computers for the 25% tourism boost across my empire as well as potentially getting my hands on steel but I'm not going for a national park build so I think I would much rather just basically beeline computers now you don't want to just click on computers you want to kind of like choose your pathway so I'll go for celestial navigation um I'll go for mass production this will make my coastal cities more viable I'll grab banking um and then I'll head towards industrialization I think that's like a reasonable pathway to kind of climb your way up the tech tree here. Amphitheater has been completed in Quila, which means we would really like another great rider, but we're only eight turns away, so we don't need to run a Theatre Square Festival because it would be done after we finish that. We would really like to get a granary in here to allow the city to continue to grow. I'd really like to get the stupa. That's nine faith per turn. That's so much faith. Okay, we unlock Celestial Navigation. This is really helpful because in this city over here, we can place the harbour and the harbour is half price. We will be building it. The harbour is half price because any district that you have built less of compared to your other districts will have a discount applied to them. So we got our Grand Master's Chapel. So we, now we can buy units with faith, which makes it so much easier for us to actually fill out our garrisons. Now, do I want spearmen? Crossbowmen are three times as expensive as spearmen. And these units literally exist just to give me amenities. So I think spearmen are the right call. I just bought that one with gold. Oops. So now we should have a full complement of units garrisoning all of our cities, which should net us 11 amenities, right? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 cities. That seems right. All right, let's get that theater square down. But first of all, we definitely want to get our hands on the Chancery. Uh, the reason we want to build the Chancery is because it gives you plus three influence points per turn, which gives us much better control over the city-states on the map. And control over the city-states on the map will get us a ton of extra yields, if you remember, because we get the extra 15% from Kilwa Kisawani. Okay, we are going to go ahead and grab ourselves Moksha. And I'm going to plant Moksha in the city of where? Kinshasa probably seems like a good target. Or Quila. Quila is a good target, I think. Extra housing, extra amenities, all that stuff. Keep the yields pumping. Pumping those yields, baby. Pump it up. Boop. I misclicked my builder. Colosseum. Any Colosseum finishers? Very nice. Oh, look at that Colosseum. That's a, that's a, what's that? Like a six city Colosseum? That's a 12 culture, 12 amenities. We're already in super giga happiness now. Oh, plus six. Look at that. 20, 30%. 30% extra gold, 30% extra gold, 30% 30, 30 extra production, sorry, 30% extra gold, 30% extra science, 30% extra culture, 45% extra faith, based and faith build. Don't need to continue to grow the city, but we can get ourselves an Ambanza. A build an Ambanza? When does this era end? That's the real question. The era ends in four turns, so we'll delay the Ambanza. I'll get the commercial hub first. So now we want to start thinking about uh, how we're going to massively increase our tourism. Uh, hint, it's going to be a tourism explosion in a couple of eras when we actually get access to our doodly boops. Let's do... I'll just buy the stupa in here. That's fine. You could use a granary and then we'll go for the theater square. Having a look at you. I think it's time we moved Magnus. He's done his job. 
we'll move him to Iman's Congo. Then in a few turns, we can go chop crazy in here. Continue to develop builders. Dude, we are in an actually insane position, like in terms of gameplay. Our empire's potential is ridiculous. Like four of my cities are ecstatic. Getting 30% boosted yields if you include the baseline Congo yields. Operation Locust is a go. We got Magnus established. We got all sorts of stuff happening. Just need to get those builders in, in position. Old God, Obelisk, and Mabushi Mai. There's a really... That's four. That's a four. Okay, this is a four adjacency holy site. We pop that down there. We get to work on that bad boy. You're in position. The Giga Chop is about to happen in this city where we just one turn basically anything that we want. Right, very nice. Um, we have entered into the Renaissance era. We get to make a new dedication. We could go for Monumentality again. Monumentality again is fine. Is that what I want to do? If I continue to do Monumentality, I could rapidly develop my empire and very quickly um, get to the next era and also just have like an overwhelm. Like the amount of development that we could do if we stick with Monumentality, I don't think anything else here really helps. So I think we do Monumentality. The sheer amount of faith that we can use this. Now, theoretically, you could make the argument that I should be banking faith for the next era era but uh what i say to that is askers did anyone ask hey it's me it's the guy it's the guy who asked all right nice there's military tactics we have mercantilism now mercantilism is a great one because it allows us to build lumber camps on flatland and we actually are not going to be chopping flatland we're going to be looking to rapidly develop our empire vertically without completely stripping the land bare so I won't be doing as much chopping as I was thinking about because I want that really really high production number the city is basically developed now we'll take Magnus and we'll reassign him to Mabamba and I'll try to get builders over here. So we'll go ahead and we'll grab civil engineering. Well, we don't need civil engineering. We can go colonialism straight into natural history. We want to get those archaeological museums. Yes. So the archaeological museums are a really high priority for us. We found a little tribal village. Oh, shit. I got that settler killed. I stepped in one tile forward and he got killed. Rip. I was, I was going to go, I was going to go to just this tile and he would have been fine. But I went that extra tile. Even in my head as I did it, I was like, I should only go one tile. But I went two tiles and now he's dead. Oh. <gasps> He lives. Oh my god. By the grace of the AI, I survived. Thank you. Uh, we just completed the really high adjacency commercial hub. We're not fishing for era score this era, though. It's not our priority. The locust swarm of builders just like descending upon my lands is amazing. I love it because it just means we have like massively improved tiles. Tiles you working. Very few unimproved tiles, which is ideal. I'm trying to think what's the optimal city location because of the man at arms coming to kill me. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Honestly, I think this is the optimal. Buy ourselves a crossbow to help defend the city. Go for the old god obelisk because that's the natural progression of things. Always get your old god obelisk. It's worth so much. Mass production. Cool. Any great works? I could sell things. I'll buy your pigs. Any great works I can buy? Sculpture, portraits, landscape, religious. Nobody really has any yet. I can 100% take your great works though, please. And I want to have all the great works for myself. Not because I'm greedy, but because I'm... Um, I want that tourism. It's like it's part of my game plan. What if I were to gold purchase a shrine and a temple in here and then I faith purchase stupa because I can do that and then you got started on a theater square right there. All right. Lumber mill. Lumber mill. This city's been chopped enough. It needs like actual productive tiles if I'm being real with you guys. And why wouldn't I be real? I need 250 gold to save this crossbowman for death. Come on. Somebody's got to have some money. Okay. Thank you. Australia came to the rescue. Bacon saved. I've saved his bacon. Uh, you step here. Shoot him. Shoot him. Theater square complete. Get the amphitheater. Thank you for the lumber mills. The chumber mills. The chumbawumba. I don't know why I know the word chumbawumba. I don't even know what it's from. I don't even know what it means. It's just, it's in there. It's in that brain of mine. It's just scrambled in with, you know, God knows how much other stuff. The entire B movie is in there somewhere. I guarantee it. Right, there's colonialism. We have native conquest. We have colonial taxes. Raj, fishing boats. Cool. So colonialism is a nice step towards natural history, which will get us the archaeologists that we crave. Because let me tell you, I crave archaeologists. Would love to build the Ambanza. Not a part of the plans right now in the, in the short term. Do have the Stupa in the city of Quila, which means we can get the work of the archaeological museum, which gets us a step towards our archaeologists. I would love to start developing my relationship with Kumasi a little bit. So I think I will. Boom. And the reason for that is because I want that overwhelming culture advancement. We can come here. We can chop. We do a little chopping. We put a new mine down. We do a little chopping. Yeah, let's let the world know that we are friends. I'm down with that. We're about to finish the Imbanza. Nice. Plus four. 
So we've unlocked banking, giving us access to the bank. The bank is a useful building, but it's not one that we're going to be prioritizing. Right now, we want to get our archaeological museums because we want our archaeologists. Um, and that's because Nzinga, or Congo in general, gets uh, plus two food, plus two production, plus one fate, plus four gold for each artifact. So getting those archaeologists out early and having a really good relationship with everyone on the map so we can go into their borders and steal their history. <laughs> Um, is a really good idea, believe it or not. Uh, I'm going to do resident embassy with every person in the game. This is just to improve my relationship with them. Uh, resident embassy gives you plus five relationship. We want to keep everyone sweet, want to keep everyone happy, want to have like mutual open borders. And actually speaking now that I have 58 tourism per turn, it's probably about time that I started to think about uh, getting mutual open borders with everyone on the map. Uh, because if you have mutual open borders, well, more importantly, you just need to have their open borders. If you have their open borders, you get a 25% tourism boost against that player. So it's just quite good to make sure that you have those open borders. And I like to do mutual open borders because that's just the way it's just, it's just, it feels like the right way to play. I mean, I know it's suboptimal, right? In my brain, I know it's suboptimal, but I don't always optimize every single tiny chunk of my gameplay. I I, I feel like I have a generally optimized understanding of the game. And then I do things that I, that feel good to me um, within that decision space. Cause I'm never, I'm never trying to beat the game in like 110 turns. I did that a couple of times when there was like specific exploits. Like Russia in particular is crazy. I think I did like a speed run with Sweden. I think I did a speed run with Russia, but that's just not the way I like to play the game. I like to just build an empire. Like, you know, I like to just, it's really satisfying to build this huge, overwhelmingly powerful and you know stonky empire so we're still maintaining suzerainty of the city states i want to be suzerain of kumasi that's who i'm going to fight for you know it's going to take a while for my builders to get over here i'm actually going to put them in mabanzan and sundi because i actually have builders in the nearby area that i can actually make use of Ooh, i forgot to give gold to kublai khan oh well rip a little bit of a waste there um i'm kind of forgetful too like that's the other half of me we did chop the quarry though or the stone in the city of Bakavu to finish the harbor nice and quick, which theoretically means we can go for the mausoleum. I would need a little bit more production in the city before I went for the mausoleum. So to that end, I would probably want to have a trader in the city. Or I could just use my gold to buy the lighthouse and the shipyard while I slow build the mausoleum. And the shipyard will eventually give me the adjacency that I need. We've got the old god obelisk in Mabanza Mabata. Mm, this is another potential harbor city. I think I'll do that right there. Amphitheater is coming online. I love to see my empires developing. It's just so, so nice. You know, watching you go from working like these kind of, you know, kind of questionable, questionable and unimproved tiles. Oh, actually, I do have room for a trader in here, which would significantly speed up Bakavu's construction of the mausoleum. That's right. I built, I built a harbor and I got the thing, of course. Now, of course, my, my true desire this game is to make it so that every single city in my empire is maximum happiness. That'll take a little bit of a while. Uh, I will be trading with Kabasa for three production per turn because that'll shave a lot of turns off the mausoleum. I'm also going to go ahead and put a mine here because that'll shave about 11 turns off the mausoleum. I would really like a builder down here. I'm going to go ahead and send a builder down there to get those fishing boats online. And I'm going to continue to build a builder every turn. I'm actually making more faith than I can produce builders. And theoretically, it would be better if I would like produce multiple lines of builders from multiple buildings, but I want to do it like super efficiently. So I'm going to make it from Liang and walk them all over the place with Thingy Doodle, uh, Mighty Mentality. I don't know, this is like a really satisfying and efficient way to play. This is just, it's, it's probably suboptimal, but it feels efficient and it feels fun to do. And that's why I like playing like this. Plus, you know, it, I don't want to be the best player in the world. I want to leave a little bit of room for the little guy. <gasps> Wait a minute. Big poggers. This is one of, this might be the second game I've ever been able to buy an archaeologist with faith, excluding games of Ethiopia. So archaeologists count as civilian units. So if you have a extremely strong Renaissance era and you can get a natural history, you can buy your archaeologists with faith. Now consider I would normally either have to hard build this for 13 turns or purchase it for 1600 gold. I can get this bad boy for 680. Oh my God. So good, dude. Um, we could go ahead and stop off for conservation. It would take us seven turns. We're making an absolutely insane amount of culture right now. This would give me three envoys. Could also open up the potential for naturalists. I think I like the three envoys thing here. So I think I will grab that real quick. Uh, Archaeological Museum completed in Mbuila. We already did that. Let's go for the market to get that trade route. I'll also probably go for the zoo immediately afterwards. I could purchase the zoo potentially in a few turns. Um, we take Susan T of Kamasi because it's a nice boost to our culture. Plus two error score as well. Very nice. I can't believe how many years I played Civ and I never, ever, ever bought archaeologists with faith until this year. Like literally. I just never knew, I just never knew it was a thing that you could do. That's a very long Australia. Like, god damn, is that a long Australia? They settled in a line, dude. Then we're going for Rome's bonus. <gasps> Sculptures! Donatello's cool. Thank you. Donatello, boom, sculpture in the capital. Oh man. I want to fill this with like amazing sculptures. So I think the big thing to do is to try to steal great works from your neighbors of the archaeological persuasion. Yes, 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 I know. It's not very cool of me as a neighbor, 
but it's also uh, my choice. So uh, I have to do it. No, uh, the, the real the real um, thing is it's just, it's just kind of good um, because the great works in your territory aren't under threat. But the great works in their territory, if they get an archaeologist, they could disappear. So you go grab theirs first. Chop and chop. Get me my amphitheater. Excavator first artifact. This will be a John Curtin artifact. Very nice. Oh, the yields, boys. The yields. It's starting to happen. Oh, man. I'm so excited. This is going to be so cool. All right, let's buy the temple and we'll buy the... Sh Oh, that's a Watt in here. Do I want the Watt? I would prefer the Stupa. I want the amenities because I want that really, really high amenity game. Amenity gaming, dude. Also, fishboat gaming feels good. Oh, yeah, I was meant to buy the harbor. Uh, uh, oops. Anyone have money? Any money, man? We can buy the harbor next turn. Okay, great. Shipyard will speed up the mausoleum. God, I love the mausoleum. God, it's my favorite wonder. I just, you know, I just, I love building the mausoleum. I love building it because the AI doesn't go for it. It just gives you so much faith, gives you so much culture, it gives you so much science, and it makes your great engineers twice as good. It, well, most of your great engineers are twice as good. God, what 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 a, what a well designed, just beautiful wonder. Chop archaeological museum, improve fish boat, fish boat. God, I cannot wait to see this the thumbnail worthiness of this city when we complete it. Like when this, just think about it, dude. Oh, we got a little island down here. I'll see if I can take that. Aha, uh -huh, more great works of writing, eh? I'll take those. Tourism's up to a nice and healthy 69 tourism per turn. That was me trying to make like an air horn noise and I completely failed. <laughs> I was just trying to make a fun noise and I just fucking just <laughs> did not make a fun noise. I made like a weird noise. <laughs> oh, mama. Okay, the dolphin has been completed. Excellent. We want to extract this great work as well. This will be a Kumasi great work, a signet ring. Oh, amazing. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Chop. Archaeological museum soon. Right, I think you're done over here. You've done your job. You managed to build a builder. Go ahead and get that tribal village for me. Little builder. Uh, you cannot lay claim to history. I will dig where I please. I'm sorry, Australia. Uh, but I kind of need... These archaeological things, they're kind of all part of my build. So there's conservation. That'll give us plus three envoys, uh, which will allow me to take back control of Kumasi and start working on control of Vilnius. I'm still in control of Chingedi and Yerevan. So those are quite important. So the priority is keep control of Chingedi and Ye Yerevan and then work on Kumasi and Vilnius. No barb clans mode this game, so there will be limited city states. I really feel like the barbarian clans mode, as fun as it is, it just kind of like massively imbalances the game. Like, whereas secret societies Im imbalances the game, but it's kind of like not, it doesn't break the game. Whereas I feel like... The Barbarian Clans mode breaks the game. So, civil engineering, urbanization, nationalism, awesome. Archaeological museum completed in the capital, so we can go ahead and buy ourselves an archaeologist with faith, 700 faith. Well spent, I might add. Um, we would love to get the Ambanza, and I think we will get the Ambanza. Where are we going to put the Ambanza? Right here. That's fine. So, the Ambanza is a great building because it always gives you five housing. It gives you plus two food and plus four faith, regardless of appeal. And we have a massive, and I mean, dude, I mean massive food surplus right here. We have a 19.5 food surplus per turn, and that's getting modified by housing. We're going to be able to grow Giga Cities, dude. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and faith by another archaeologist. This might actually be the most disgusting build I've ever done. I'm blown away by it. Now, to be fair, we are making use of Void Singers. Oh, another archaeologist. Which is significantly making this more powerful of a build. But still, even so, a game is for playing and being interesting and having fun. So I'm more than happy to use a slightly broken um, thing to have more fun. Like, that's just, um, yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. I will take an Abraham Lincoln um, archaeological doodad. Let's take that tile for ourselves and go and prove it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm scanning my cities to see if they're working any unimproved tiles. And if I'm working unimproved tiles in the city, I'll send a builder over there to fix that. Right, I think it might be time for me to examine whether or not I have all the great works. Give me those. Um, and then I also want to look and see if there's any luxuries on sale. Looks like no. Uh, my archaeological museum over here has been completed. We get ourselves an archaeologist. Amazing. We faith by, we continue to faith by builders. We just want to have a lot of them. And then I guess a commercial hub in this city is totally within the realm of like reasonability. Get those trade routes up, baby. Why trade routes? It's because if you trade with another player, you get a 25% boost to tourism against them. So trading is good. It's just a good thing to do. But up, 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 plus one. Oh, industrialization. Very nice. Plus one production to mine improvements. What's this? Public works, skyscrapers, Statue of Liberty, built farms. Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. Right, there we go. More great works are under construction. Chop here, faith by... Uh, what? Did I already faith by that? Oh, I did. <laughs> I already faith by that. I'm so dumb. I'm a dummy. Uh, so we have industrialization giving us a 
ton of extra production from our mine improvements, also potentially open up the idea of going for a coal power plant. But instead, we're going to go for computers because we want that 25% passive tourism gain from our great works. Um, we're sitting on an uh, governor title. How long until the next era? 20 to 40 turns. Uh, we could plug in public works. We're not building settlers anymore. We don't need to build thingies either. So we have a wildcard policy slot open. We could plug in Merchant Confederation. We could put Republican Legacy. Hello. Uh, excuse me? The based department, seven ecstatic cities, amazing. I need, I need to really put together my, my visual mod pack that lets you see all this kind of stuff. Seven ecstatic cities, dude. Ho. Oh. Ho 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 Oh. Oh, yes. Uh, I would like cheaper military units with production is fine. And I would like giga relics to be boosted. Now, technically, I could have gone for uh, St. Basil's Cathedral and Mont Saint Michel, but I didn't really want to build them this game. Now, St. Basil's Cathedral in my capital would be super good if I could still get it. It's a 14 turn build here. Let's do it. I also really need to get my hands on Cristo Redentor. The reason I want to get Cristo Redentor is because it prevents. Um, so basically, religious tourism is a type of tourism in the game that is completely hampered by the Enlightenment Civic. If I go over and I look at the Enlightenment Civic, you can see here, religious tourism uh, effects are halved versus your civilization. So uh, that means any religious tourism that I generate from example, relics, uh, will be half as valuable. But if I get Crystal Red and Tor, they get full value. Um, so I really want to get Crystal Red and Tor and things that boost religious tourism. I don't think Mont Saint Michel is particularly good here um, because I don't plan to use my apostles to generate relics. So that's fine. Do I want to plug on a different military card? No, I think the military card I have plugged in, like a little bit of little little trickle of gold is fine. Now the entire goal of Mabanza Wembo was to be a national park um, producer. So it is fulfilling that role as we speak. And I want to get three national parks in here if I could. I can chop. I've got trade routes available now. Very nice. Market coming. Oh, man. I wish I could move these relics around to show you just how good they are. Like, if I could put them all in my capital, dude. We are going to have so many yields. Look at this food, this production, this gold. I think, though, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. We are well in the upswing on our power spike. We're making 400 culture per turn, 200 science per turn. Dude, it feels good to play this sieve. This sieve feels like cash money. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!